Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Monkey Massive D. Do you have 11 hours to spare? Because <laughs> if you do, then go in the description box down below after this video and enjoy the full the full almost 11 hour stream that I did for the One Piece Top 30 Strongest Characters stream. I promise you, the year just started and already one of the most cancerous and toxic streams of the year. I promise you that. A shout out to JD Legend, to Bensei, as well as Eric of the Rift Force Podcast for joining on the fun and having their top 30s as well. I suggest highly that you do subscribe to that co-working channel because moving forward, that channel will be very important for reaction content. Also includes one piece reaction content because in this year, we're gonna be doing a lot of changes. I think overall for the overall content at hand, some pretty damn good changes, but changes nonetheless. This video is a far more condensed version of that stream where I'm gonna give you my top 30 and why picked characters, where they're ranked, that kind of stuff. And trust me, I think my list is good. You think it's gonna be terrible. So now let's get into it. The top 30 strongest characters in one piece. I'm going to go by batches of 10, and then we'll talk about those 10 characters and move forward in those batches. So here's the first batch. Number 30 is Queen the Plague. Number 29 is Lucky Rue. Number 28 is Weevil. 27 is Kid. Number 26 is Trafalgar D. Water Law. 25 is Mayo Ray Lee. 24 is Boa Hancock. 23 is Garp the Fist. Garp Chujo. 22 is Yamato. 21 is Marco the Phoenix. Let's discuss this step by step here. Okay. The reason why... I have Lucky Roo on my list is because I envision Lucky Roo as someone that is comparable to a second division type individual, like a queen or a smoothie, some of that caliber. Now that could be wrong, fair enough, but that's how I envision it. Ever since we had in the ultimate chapter when they had the Uncle Bounty, when they talked about Shanks' crew and they specifically mentioned by name, Yasop, Lucky Roo, and Ben Beckman, for me, the Red Hair Pirates, they're commander-ish people if they have those. They are built different because Shanks and his crew, they lack the quantity that Big Mom and Kaido has probably, but they make up for it with supreme quality. Absolutely. That's my personal theory on that one. And I'm confident to say Lucky Roo, I think, is right now the strongest of the people that would be considered like the second division type dude. That's how I kind of see Lucky Roo. Again, that could be wrong, but that's where I have him personally. And Queen the Plague, I have as the top, he squeezed on in, in my third, he just wiggled on in. I think there's a case you could make here. After looking at Peril Sparrow, and how Peril Sparrow in this arc was compared to Jack the Drought, where both Jack and Peril Sparrow could defeat Inu Neko when they were in Sulong form, then there's a case where you could argue that Cracker is stronger than Jack. Therefore, Smoothie is stronger than Queen. One problem though, Smoothie is... <sighs> Smoothie hasn't done anything, ever, and it's annoying. I can maybe scale the Pirate Warriors games, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I am not gonna do that. So Smoothie has to do something. And then maybe in the future when she does something, We'll see, okay, she is actually stronger than Queen to play. And because half a power scaling is also based on poor trail for One Piece, Smoothie, because she is the second highest week commander, she is stronger than Cracker, but that's only on paper. So that's really all I can do for her, poor trail wise. But until then, no mas, hell no. Now, why is 28 Weevil? Because the longer the series goes on, the stronger I think Weevil has to be. And Weevil is right now, I think, at the bottom of like the folks I'll consider to be like first division commanders, like right hand men, that kind of stuff. The reason why is because Weevil is going to play a role somehow, some way with Marco and with Luffy. And he does have that Kizaru young Whitebeard hype. And Whitebeard in his prime was pretty nuts when it comes to his strength and it comes to his abilities, though he lacks the different power, of course. But that's still pretty impressive. So. Think about this for a second, all right? Luffy is getting more and more powerful. 
And in the future, Weevil may have an altercation with Luffy. His R-word strength, and not Toys R Us, no, his R-word strength is going to be so impressive. <laughs> Tyler One style, and it's going to be nuts. So the stronger Luffy becomes, by proxy, in a weird roundabout way, the stronger Weevil has to come as well. He could actually match Luffy. I'm not going to jump the gun here. I'm going to be very conservative when it comes to Weevil. Because I want to see how he does with someone like Jozu or like Marco. People like that. Vista. Something like that. So until we see Weevil in action, it's hard to say where he is, of course. The longer the series goes on, the stronger he has to become in a weird way. Kid and Law. Listen. Look here. Look here! I feel bad for Law. Because Law has actually shown feats of substance against two Yonko, actually wounded and damaged them. And his powers are so damn good. Kaido said, Law, your powers really do throw me off. I'm like, yeah, Law is, at this point in time, he appears to be strong than Kid. But Kid may have, I don't know, man. Kid has been just a disappointment in this arc. He's been mid as all hell. Folks want to assume that Kid is going to have a Conqueror's Hockey Awakening like Luffy? Uh, maybe? Uh, maybe? And, of course, there's that idea of him taking a giant sword on Gashima, lifting that sword up, and doing something with that sword. Whatever, okay? I'm putting Law just over Kid to be conservative here, because they both have showcased awakenings, and they both have the same problem with their awakenings, where like they can't use it that often, like a Katakuri or Doflamingo. Though I'd argue that Law's awakening is clearly better. Though to be fair, Kid has conquered hockey, which we haven't seen be used at all in this arc just yet. Like not a single time. In the anime, yeah, and the fodder guys were not even knocked out. <laughs> It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. And also, note this too. Kid's powers are clearly, clearly very situational. If there is no metal around for Kid to use, then Kid's kind of in a pickle. Like, when you think about how he had to fight against Kaido, what, what was his idea? I'm going to grab all of the metal in the castle. That was his big idea. So, if the castle was made completely out of bamboo, what does Kid do? You lose! So... I think that Law, at this point in time, based on the feats and based on all different things, is stronger than Kid. But I put him a hair above Kid because I'm being very conservative here because uh, who knows a Kid? Just who knows, right? Number 25 is Rayleigh. Mayo Rayleigh. Rayleigh, for me, I think is the weakest of the old man trio. And as time goes on, he only gets weaker and slower. Number 24 is Boa Hancock. She's actually on my list now when she was not on my list last year. Why? Conqueror's Hockey Infusion. I think there's a possibility that she does have Conqueror's Hockey Infusion. A lot of attack power and attack potency. Maybe that was what she did against Douglas Bull in the movie, but that's a movie. Even though it's a very impressive kick on that big, giant Douglas Bullet metal thing, Gundam, it's still a movie. Boa Hancock could have Conqueror's Hockey Infusion. She's one of the first people in the story that we have known has had a Conqueror's Hockey. And because the women in Amazon Lily train with hockey on a regular basis, she might also have the Rio Hockey that does internal damage, the advanced Rio Hockey, on top of the Conqueror's Hockey Infusion. And if you combine those possibilities with her already broken Devfru powers, then she is a force to be reckoned with. That possibility alone is worth that much. But I won't go too far with her because some folks theorize like, she's going to lose to Kobe. Oh my God. That's gonna be a crazy day. If Boa Hancock loses to Kobe, that's gonna just flip the community on his head. I absolutely will. Yamato and Marco is relatively intriguing because Yamato has been very impressive against Kaido because she did stall Kaido for a period of time. And Marco did stall King and Queen for a period of time, 2v1, went back and forth. Yamato was on my list last year, but she is now because she's been very impressive. However, it is very clear that when it came to Kaido and Yamato, she was outclassed by a mile. Outclassed by a mile. Yeah, she did get shots on Kaido like a few times, but they were insignificant. Compare that to Zoro, where Zoro actually scarred Kaido, or Law and his unique powers, and how he's able to stab Kaido and Kaido's coughing up blood, like your power is so weird, Law, that kind of stuff. It's like, Yamato's impressive, but we see clearly now, after it's all done, against Daddy K, 
all she could really do is stall. Despite her having Conqueror's Hockey Infusion, despite her having a very good zone ability, having the Glacier uh, Cloak around her to block Kaido's Thunder Bagua to, to some respect, but then she even says afterwards, when the wound starts opening up in her head, she couldn't block it entirely and how her Thunder Bagua was like nothing compared to his Thunder Bagua, like that kind of stuff. And also, we can see as well with the arrow attacks, her Narukabri arrow could be swatted away like a fly on Kaido's part. But then his Vajra arrow took a lot of effort, took a lot of focus for her to actually block that attack, and she was still blown back. And even though they do cancel out in their breath attacks, number one, I'm not too sure if his hybrid form breath attack is equal to his dragon form breath attack. That's very important there because the ancient Zoans and the mythical Zoans in Wano Country so far have operated very differently than the regular Zoans because the hybrid form is like the best form, but we've seen people like King the Wildfire or Queen or Kaido interchange between all their forms on a regular basis. They don't just rely on the one form. So number one, I don't know if Kaido's Blast Breath and Hybrid form is equal to the one in Giant Dragon form. And then number two is that because it's a Song of Fire and Ice, they do cancel each other out like what happened with Ace and Aokiji in Marine 4. And I think that Ace was significantly weaker than Aokiji, very similar to Yamato and Kaido. And also, we have to remember here too, is that Kaido is very far from fresh. Now, to be fair, Yamato did have to go against the Armored Division and took damage from them, that is absolutely true, I won't deny that. But at the same time, compared to Kaido, who had to fight against the Scabbards, had to go through Roof Piece, had to deal with Luffy, got scarred by Zoro, had to fight Luffy off screen for a period of time, who had just had Wicked Conqueror's Hockey, they had to go back down and handle business again with the Scabbards. So many different things that Kaido has been doing, bro. So many different things. So even though they're both not fresh, Yamato was one day old meat and Kaido is one week old meat. So Yamato has been impressive, but I'm very hesitant to put her over someone like Marco. Because remember too, Marco wasn't just stalling and fighting against King and Queen and going back and forth between those two. Like he was also handling other things on the side like with Chopper and the Ice Oni stuff. So Marco was doing various things on top of stalling King and Queen. And she does have that experience fighting against Kaido for how many decades now? So she knows what Kaido can do, of course. But moving forward, I'm gonna say in a general sense, these folks are stronger than Yamato, but I'm being very, I'll admit this, I'm being very conservative when it comes to Yamato's powers. Absolutely I am. So, now let's get to like the next batch here. Number 20 is King the Wildfire. Number 19 is Sanji. Number 18 is Zoro. Number 17 is Sengoku. Number 16 is City of the Rain. Number 15 is Katakuri. Number 14 is Sabo. Number 13 is Green Bull. Number 12 is Fujitora. And number 11 is Ben Beckman. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm not seeing a particular D-Clan member on my list just yet. What, 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 what? But we'll get into that soon enough. King the Wildfire, I have over Marco at number 20 because the man was like literally unkillable when he had that Charmeleon state, when the fire was on. When you think about it, if he just kept that fire on, what could have Zoro have done? Even with Conqueror's Hockey Infusion, what could have Zoro have done? And it doesn't seem to actually predicate on stamina, but Marco's is. Marcos is. So King the Wildfire, in terms of endurance and durability, may be better than someone like Marco. And based on attack power too, he seems to be, I'm saying seems to be superior than Marco as well. So Marco does regenerate, of course, but King's body is very interesting. And I would say I do edge out King slightly over Marco. They're kind of interchangeable in a way, you can argue. Fair enough, I'm, I'm not against that. But I do edge out King slightly over Marco. Just slightly, just slightly. Sanji and Zoro. I believe that Sanji and Zoro are very comparable in terms of power. I think that they're actually equal in terms of power. However, because Sanji nerfed himself with the Raid Suit, and him destroying the Raid Suit, I think that Sanji is actually now slightly below Zoro. However, I'm not too sure if the Raid Suit is a permanent nerf. Meaning that I think at some point in the future, the Raid Suit will come back. Absolutely. But the key thing here for Sanji is that Sanji was able to beat Queen way easier than Zoro beating King. When you think about Zoro beating King, he had to utilize like a hockey so strong that if he went any further, for like let's say a few minutes, he would lose life force. All King the Wildfire had to do was maintain his Charmeleon Charmander state with the fire, and then Zoro, in order to sustain that King Hell state for any longer, would have had to deplete his own life. Sanji was doing damage to Queen 
the entire way through. It was way more of an even fight, despite Sanji nerfing himself, which I thought was very impressive. I thought that was very, like, I couldn't ask for any more with Sanji. The way King dominated Zoro at times, that did not happen in the slightest with Queen, not in the slightest. And this is something that has been consistent with Sanji and Zoro fights. Whenever they fight organizations, especially in the, actually really only in the pre-time skip, but it's brought back now in the post-time skip Wano Country, where whenever Sanji fights against the third strongest guy, like let's say a Bon Clay or a Jabra, he tends to have an easier time with the third strongest guy than Zoro, the second strongest guy, so a Kaku or Mr. One, and then Luffy, when he fights the head boss, he has an all-out life-and-death bloody war. That's how I think Oda has always maintained that balance of the monster trio. And also, I think there's hints here, very strong hints, that Sanji's invisibility is still in play here. He may not know it himself, but before he does the Hell's Memories on Queen, after he made the decision to actually destroy the raid suit, when he disappears from Queen's vision, there is that shh sound effects. That sound effect is the same stuff that we've seen for the raid suit, for City of the Rain, for Queen going visible. So Sanji potentially beat Queen without even fully understanding his own powers. He just did it. Ultimately speaking, I think that Zoro and Sanji, they beat commanders, true, but Sanji had an easier time against Queen than Zoro did King. I think it's also very, very apparent. Very apparent. Now, to be fair here for both Zoro and Sanji, both of their fights had some degree of outside interference. With Sanji, it was that one random geisha that was Queen's second best girl. And then with Zoro, it was the Shamisen, which actually activated Enma to start that whole Enma process. But I would argue in both cases, they would have both been Queen and King regardless. So to me, the idea of Zoro and Sanji being the wings of the King of Pirates, I think is true and earnest. Where Sanji and Zoro, in order for them to be Luffy's wings, they have to be relatively close in many respects. And one of those respects is power. Absolutely. Now, I know that folks are going to bring up Yamato in relation to Zoro and Sanji, especially if Yamato were to join the Straw Hat crew. For me, because I don't see Oda relinquishing the monster trio dynamic at any given point in time, what I've said on stream several times, and I'll say it here now, after Zoro and Sanji beat their respective commander foes, so king and queen, then they would be stronger than Yamato. So if Yamato were to join the crew, she's stronger than Jinbei, yes, that's I think confirmed that for sure, but she's not as strong as Zoro and Sanji, because I don't think that Oda would relinquish the monster trio dynamic, because I think it's been the most consistent dynamic I've seen in the story thus far. And again, I'm being very conservative, not politically, but power scalingly. I guess it's a thing now, why not? Screw it. I'm being very conservative with Yamato's abilities at this point in time. So Zoro and Sanji are my 18 and 19. 17 is Sengoku the Buddha. Why? Because ultimately speaking, Sengoku, I think, is the strongest of the old man trio. The main reason why is because of Devil Power, the Golden Buddha. In the case of Whitebeard, Whitebeard was devastating as all hell, but he was slower, he was older, he had a health issue. Physically, you can argue he was weaker as well. All these things were affected by age and health, but his Delphi power is actually still seemingly just as beastly as what we see in the Odin flashback. It's just as nuts. I'm not too sure if Delphi powers wane the same way strength and stamina does, when you get older in One Piece, I'm not too sure. So I think in the past, Garp was stronger than Sengoku. But over the course of time, because he still has the Golden Buddha form, he's retained more of his power over the course of time than someone like Garp. So yeah, his stamina has gone worse over the ages. Absolutely, that's what I doubt. But because of the different power, I kind of give the edge to him than someone like Garp or Rayleigh. Personally. Now, number 15 is Katakuri. He has a mega church shot in the realm of lightning for a reason. When I compare King to Katakuri, I think without a doubt, without a doubt, Katakuri is stronger. Now, a few weeks back, I did do a poll on who was strong between those two on my on my YouTube community page, and folks did vote in favor of Katakuri more so than King. And I agree. So that may require a video in the future, going deeper into why Katakuri. Basically, she's so far, it's showing the King of the Wildfire. 14 is Sabo. For me, as time moves forward, 
Sabo only gets stronger. After all, Sabo is already world renowned before he got the Mare Mare no Mi. And now that he's gone, the Mare Mare no Mi after Dressrosa, the longer Sabo has that fruit, the greater control and proficiency he has with that ability. Sabo and the Rev, Karasu, Limbrick, Morley against two admirals, Green Bull and Fujitora. Fujitora wounded, scuffed. That means something. That means you do not underestimate Dragon's right-hand man. Sabo is a beast. And Sabo is my gatekeeper for the Admirals, personally. So Green Bull Fujitora, I think, are the two lowest Admirals because of the two newest Admirals. It could be the case where they're actually not, where they're actually stronger than Kuzan or Kizaru, maybe. But I do lean towards the more seasoned Admiral Kizaru over those two. And then finally, Ben Beckman, I think, is the strongest of the first division commanders, right hand men, that kind of stuff. So he's stronger than Katakuri, he's stronger than King the Wildfire, Mark of the Phoenix, Sabo. Main reason why? Very simple. Because the red haired pirates, I think, are built different on so many fronts. Where they lack in quantity, they make up for with supreme, supreme quality. And when you get mentioned by name, when you have the Yonko bounties revealed, and not a single other commander was mentioned by name. Ben Beckman, I think, is that dude. Because he is the moon to Shanks' son. And honestly, I think he could maybe beat an admiral one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. After all, oto to 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 So, on that note then, let's get to our final batch. The top 10 strongest characters in One Piece right now. In my personal opinion, of course. I could be wrong, but that's what I think right now. Number 10 is the man himself, Ototototo Kizaru. Number nine is Luffy. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Number eight is Kuzan, Aokiji. Number seven is Mihoku. Number six is Monkey D. Dragon. Number five is Akainu. Number four is Blackbeard. Number three is Big Mom. But put a star on Big Mom. Number two is Kaido. And number one, the strongest guy I have right now on the planet is Red Hair Shunks. And that is my full top 30 list. Break down the top 10 guys. Kizaru, I think, is the strongest of the current day admirals. So let's say it's Marine Ford War Part 2. And then you have the three admirals sitting down from like the scaffold. And let's say Sabo's captured, trying to get killed. I think the admiral that sits in the middle this time is Kizaru. I think it's Kizaru. And the kind who's on top of the scaffold. <laughs> That, that's what I think goes down, personally. Monkey D. Luffy's number nine. Luffy... <sighs> Dude, I'm sweating, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Monkey D. Luffy is nuts. <laughs> the kid is a freaking monster. We have seen Herculean leaps and bounds in terms of power. When you think about Zoro being in his King Hell state, and him infusing Conqueror's talking to his weapons, and how if he goes any further, that's going to siphon off life force, that kind of stuff. Think about Yamato, where she can do it too, but can't even get Kaido on his back. Like Kaido, all the attacks, not a big deal. Yo. Luffy, Conqueror's Hockey infusion, Rio Hockey, advanced Rio Hockey that goes inside and does internal damage. Kaido was on his back. Kaido's like, what, 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 sky splitting. I'm like, oh no. This is a very key detail here. The vast majority of the attacks that we've seen Luffy deliver on Kaido are in base. Oh, dude, what? They're in base, man. They're in base, base form. And at some point in the future, there could be a gear five. Absolutely, or let's say a gear four, another version. But yo, like Luffy has been just so crazy powerful and it's, yeah. At this point in time, I don't think Luffy can lose. He is not losing. He isn't losing to a current day Admiral one on one. And it makes sense, you can argue, given the time frame, right? We only have like four or five years under the story, right? Luffy's future foes, Blackbeard, Emu, maybe, are gonna be way stronger than Admiral. They're gonna be like final villain status. In the future, current day Admirals are gonna be dealt with Straw Hats. If Luffy rolls on in, very similar to Whitebeard in Marine for the Holy Land, just how Mark got to fight against Kizaru, Jozu, Aokiji, that kind of stuff. Sanji, Admiral. Zoro, Admiral. Yamato, if you the crew, or Jinbei, Jinbei, Admiral. His boys are gonna handle business 
and he fights the big baddie cream of the crop like the end all be all villain. I think Luffy come end the series will be in the top three strongest characters guaranteed, if not number one. And we're only a few years away from that. Wano Country is the gateway to end the series. And Luffy is an absolute beast. Number eight is Kuzan, because I think that Kuzan is still ahead of Luffy by a little bit. But honest to God, come the end of this fight against Kaido, yeah, Luffy will probably not only beat Kuzan in power, but also number seven, Mihawk, saddle up. Saddle up, as Mihawk said himself back in these blue. Becoming the Pirate King is a way tougher dream than being the world's greatest swordsman. So saddle up Mihawk, the way Mihawk wanted to test Whitebeard's power to see how far he was from Whitebeard, that's gonna be Luffy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, understand this, Luffy, real soon, I think, in the next three or four years, is gonna be stronger than Whitebeard and Ring 4. Like, absolutely is, without a doubt. Like, way too strong. Seriously strong. So, Mihawk, saddle up. Saddle up. Saddle up, sea biscuit. Six is Dragon, because... Whatever. Like, oh my god, dude. I, honestly, I don't know why Dragon's in my top ten. Oh, no, I know why. Because I have to give him some credit, right? I, I do, I guess. I mean, he ran from Blackbeard. Um, <laughs> had his right-hand man stolen, defeated, killed, whatever. And all he does is sweat in Kamabaka. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, yeah, Dragon's up here because of just... Courtesy, okay, like he's Luffy's dad, so he's probably strong. But portrayal-wise, outside of being the world's most wanted man, his portrayal has been taking a beating. For the past few years, his portrayal has been taking a beating. It would feel weird to have Luffy stronger than his dad, even after the Kaido fight. I don't know. Dragon makes me mad. <laughs> he just makes me mad, but he's there because of courtesy. Five is a Kainu. He is the strongest Marine right now. He is the number one, the number one Marine, the number one. I think he's a beast. I think he's a stud. I think he's the guy that can give a Yonko of like an extreme fight, without a doubt. Without a doubt. However, he ain't beating them. Blackbeard, I think, is broken as all hell. We all know, of course, two, count them two, disgustingly insane devil powers are confirmed. He may have the third one. And if he does, I mean, saddle up. We all know how powerful and busted the Yami Yami no Mi is. And because he's had more time with that fruit and the Gura Gura no Mi as well, then he's only got more powerful. In fact, I'm willing to bet that Blackbeard does not have something like Conquer Saki Infusion, because why on God's green earth would he need it when he has two of the most powerful devil fruits in history? And when he ran up on Baltigo like that, yeah, yeah, oh my God, Dragon, where are you, Kamabaka? Number three is Big Mom, number two is Kaido. For me, I do have them very close to each other, but I do edge out Kaido more so than Big Mom. And we can kind of tell based on their fight that they had before they joined forces, they're pretty close in power. They really are. But I put a star next to her name earlier because Big Mom, I think, got a buff with Hera. I think Hera is actually better than Zeus. And the main reason why is because Hera has her two OnlyFans simps, Prometheus and Napoleon. So they have better combo attacks. They, I think they definitely do. Kind of over Big Mom, maybe? Cause she did kind of get a buff. Eh, kind of get a buff, kind of get a buff. And then number one, strongest in the verse, God King of the Realm, Shanks. Easy clap. For me, Shanks is the modern day Goldie Roger. At the beginning of 2021, when Kaido gave us his list, if you would, and a lot of folks, I'm gonna give it, here's the thing about Kaido and Shanks. Every time Shanks and Kaido are mentioned or talk in the same breath, there always seems to be an advantage that Shanks has. Whether it's because of Marine Ford, he had an altercation with Kaido, and then arrived at Marine Ford nonetheless. In the Vivid Records, they confirm now that King the Wildfire was involved in the altercation, and still... You have powerful dudes on a murder high that just completely shut down like they're deer in the headlights. And then the big 18-wheeler truck coming their way is Shanks, all diesel. And then Blackbeard on that power high also, no, no, no. We're not ready for you, yo. I'm like, what the? It's, a Sh it's, it's, it's just Shanks. When you have Kaido envision Luffy ceiling, and among these great men is Shanks. I mean, dog. When I think about all the men on that list, I'm confident that Odin would have beaten Kaido, absolutely. 
We know for a fact that he came back from his voyage several times stronger. I'm very confident that Roger, Whitebeard, and Rox, at their best, could have also been Kaido as well in one-on-one -on -one combat. Why is Shanks the exception? Oh wait, let's not make Shanks the exception. Let's put Shanks in the same camp where Kaido put him in, where he belongs. Shanks, I think it also be Kaido one-on-one. -on -one. I am that confident in Shanks. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, it's going to be extreme, extreme diff. But I got the red hair wonder over land, sea, and air. Because allegedly, Kaido is the strongest. Allegedly, you bet on Kaido. Allegedly. That is the reason why I do have Shanks over Kaido. And that's my list. That is my top 30 strongest characters of 2021. Of course, you will say, my list is trash. My list is garbage. Fair enough, fine. I think yours is too. But that's the beauty of the toxicity. That is the beauty of it all.